Let's take a step back and look at the generative 3D pipeline as a whole. After multi-view diffusion comes ML-friendly 3D. This is some non-mesh representation of 3D that's easy for AI to handle. In the current research ecosystem, this can be a lot of different things. Gaussian splatting, triplanes, nerfs, and it's all changing very rapidly. So like in the case of multi-view diffusion, you can treat this as a black box using pre-trained models from Hugging Face. But in this unit, I'll be diving deeper into one of these, Gaussian splatting. The reason I'm diving deeper into this is that unlike the other non-mesh representations, splats can be rendered in real time, making them suitable for end-to-end -end 3D applications, where everything is AI compatible. So what's Gaussian splatting? It's a differentiable rasterization technique. A what? Differentiable is a fancy way to say AI compatible, and rasterization means taking data and drawing it on the screen. Rasterization is already really common, usually in the form of triangle rasterization, where 3D geometry data is converted to 2D pixel data and drawn on the screen. That's how meshes are usually rendered, but triangle rasterization isn't very AI compatible. Why? Because it includes discrete decisions, like whether a pixel is inside or outside the triangle. Neural networks don't like discrete decisions. They want everything to be fuzzy and continuous, or in other words, differentiable. So Gaussian splatting is a differentiable rasterization technique, but how does it actually work? Splats are composed of points, millions of them, where each point consists of four parameters, position, covariance, color, and alpha, or in other words, where is it, how it's stretched, what color it is, and how transparent it is. Then to rasterize a splat, take all the points, project them into 2D, then for every pixel, sample every point, and calculate its contribution to that pixel. This means that in theory, every point contributes to every pixel. That sounds really inefficient. It is, but that's okay because it's differentiable. And in practice, this is optimized with a tile-based rendering approach, which makes it a lot faster. Also, if you're not training a model, it doesn't need to be differentiable. So you can just treat every point as an instance quad and render it with traditional rendering techniques. This is how all the web viewers work. Now for training or producing the splats. The original paper uses a traditional algorithm called structure from motion to get the starting points. These points are then rasterized using Gaussian splatting. Then the result image is compared to the original image to compute Loss. Then, gradient descent is used to adjust the point values, position, covariance, color, and opacity, until the rasterized images are close to the original images. They also use heuristics to automatically add and remove points as needed. This approach is suitable for learning a single scene, but the concepts also generalize to more complex models, like neural networks, as is the case in the research project LGM, which we'll be using in the next section to build our own generative 3D demo. Start by installing the required libraries, then, just like before, create a multi-view diffusion pipeline, since this is the first step of LGM. Then then for the next step, create a splat pipeline. This generates a splat given multi-view images. Then just like before, load an input image, the classic cat statue. And finally, pass the image through the multi-view diffusion pipeline, then through the splat pipeline. This results in a matrix of splat data that can be saved with splatpipeline.savepoy. Download it. Congratulations. Now you have a POI file, which can be viewed with a simple viewer like Model 3D, or a more complex editor like GSplat Editor, where you can fix the rotation and convert it to a more lightweight format like .splat. Recap. Gaussian splatting is a differentiable rasterization technique, meaning ML-friendly 3D, that can be rendered in real time. It's used in generative 3D pipelines like LGM. And if we take a step back and look at generative 3D as a whole, Gaussian splatting fits in this intermediate step, ML-friendly 3D, alongside other options like triplanes. While this can be rendered directly, for most real-world applications today, there's one more step, which we'll cover in the next unit, meshes.